In my most recent video, I talked all about the Boeing 747X program, but there was one plane in the series that I didn't mention. An incredible never-built Boeing 747-500 with prop fan engines. It would have an impressive range to go from London to Sydney non-stop and be ultra-fuel efficient. Despite all of these advantages, Boeing never chose to follow through with the concept. In today's video, we will look at what the Boeing 747-500 was, how it improved on the Boeing 747-400, who would have bought it, and ultimately, why it was never built. This mini episode of Never Built highlights a design that didn't quite fit in with the others of my 747X video, but I wanted to highlight it all the same. So make sure you see that one first. You see, the Boeing 747-500 was a design that was going to take advantage of the engine of the future, the prop fan. It was a new take on the jet engine that put counter-rotating props behind the engine and would bring it with a host of advantages. But this story actually starts with another plane, the Boeing 727. At the time, Boeing was also redesigning its successful 727 series with a new prop fan engine in mind. This plane would be called the Boeing 7J7, the J standing for Japanese, and it would have been incredible for the world that was burned by the fuel crisis. It would have a long range and unmatched fuel efficiency, especially against rival plane designs. I've actually done an entire video on the Boeing 7J7 program that you can check out here. But needless to say, the concept was simultaneously cutting edge and also a backward step for aviation. This leads us back to the 747-500. Like the 7J7 program, Boeing needed a successor to the Boeing 747-400, its best-selling version of the jumbo jet yet. Whilst it also had been working on a new aircraft, the N650 and others, including a strange partnership with Airbus, it was also flirting with the idea of taking the prop fan engines and slapping it on the Boeing 747. After all, why not scale up the technology and call it a day, in a new engine option way? Essentially, making a double-decker 747 jet with propeller engines in the early 90s. Let's talk specifics. This 747-500 model would have a range of 8,700 nautical miles, or around 16,000 kilometers. This range would have made it perfect for routes such as London to Sydney, New York to Sydney, New York to Singapore, and Los Angeles to Singapore. And it would have become the 777-8X of its time, and could have possibly been bought by airlines such as Qantas and Singapore. By comparison, the 747-400 could only fly 7,670 nautical miles, or 14.2 thousand kilometers. Boeing felt that the program was very doable, cheap to build, and would result in approximately 10% reduced fuel burn costs on a seat mile basis compared to the original 747-400. The plane would also have a new wing-like structure developed for twin-jet aircraft and a stretched upper deck to accommodate 500 passengers and all their luggage. Boeing planned to introduce this aircraft by the 1990s and was confident enough that airlines would choose it over the existing 747-400. Boeing was targeting airlines like British Airways, Cathay Pacific, Japan Airlines, Qantas, Lufthansa, ANA, and Singapore Airlines as a launch customer. The plane would have been the 747-8 of the 90s. So why was it never built? There were a multitude of various problems with this design, and we'll start with the engines. You see, these prop fan engines were loud and sounded like a chainsaw. In subsequent tests, the UDF demonstrated its ability to operate at full speed. And despite efforts by General Electric and other designers, 
Airports and airlines were not convinced that they would be able to make it quieter than an existing jet engine. Plus, this new engine type would insert lots of unknowns into buying the plane, such as the development of the aircraft and maintenance issues, spare parts, and perhaps even an increased cost. The killing blow came when GE and the other designers working on the engine type decided to not go ahead with the production of the engine. And this was a major reason why the 747-500 never went ahead. Boeing would then re-evaluate the design to include one with other engines, the normal turbojets, but there were still some other issues. Let's talk about that market. The plane was created in mind for long-haul routes for operators like Qantas and Singapore, but just two carriers don't make a market for a new type of aircraft. These two airline operators would only possibly buy 10 to 20 units each, leaving Boeing holding the bag with a massive development bill. Boeing had tried to enter this market before with the Boeing 747 SP, a long-range version of the 747-100. They only sold 45 of them to carriers like Iran Air and Pan Am, by which this time were not in the market for any new jumbo jet aircraft. In fact, no one needed the 747-500. The market was saturated by hundreds of the 747-400, and there were plenty of twin jet designs like the 767 and A300 slowly encroaching on the market. In 1985, the ETOPS rules were relaxed, allowing twin jet aircraft to fly over oceans. Airlines could now fly smaller equipment like that 767 or A300 and sell all the seats on the plane, or fly two daily round trips. They would have struggled to sell the same amount of seats as on the 747-500. With ETOPS expanded yet again in 1988, the need for high-capacity quadjet to fly a long range simply vanished. The only other place on the planet to fly a plane like this would be Australia to South America, but this market was limited indeed. With no buyers for the type and no engine, Boeing decided to pass on the easy-to-make and sell 747-500 and instead proceed to build the later 747X design, which, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, you can see on the channel right here, right now. Thanks so much for watching today's quick and mini video. I've had a lot of new people subscribe to the channel and come to check out what else I have going on and I say welcome. If you have any questions for a video of the future, let me know in the comments. I read every one and I'd be thrilled to see your ideas. And if you want to support the channel, then we have a fantastic Patreon here where you can see videos early and chat to other fans. Check it out to see what other rewards we have and feel smug that you're helping a little channel grow. Also, a small channel update. Now that I have successfully moved out of the countryside, I'll have better access to the internet and be able to do live streams. What an aviation channel will do as a live stream, I still don't know. But again, maybe you have the idea in the comments. Thanks so much for watching.